Hello and welcome back to Advanced Accounting 2. This is your second last week of chapter topics. We are going to be looking at the translation of foreign operations. Now, I should note that while you know, perhaps this course is backwards in the way that uh, we would be doing this in practice, meaning if we were consolidating a set of financial statements, first we'd fix all the subs mistakes, which, you know, I guess we've talked about in <laughs> intro accounting, uh, intermediate financial accounting one and two, like how do you actually account for these things? And then what we would do is we'd make sure it is in our uh, appropriate gaps. So if our subs were, say, uh, reporting an ASPE, we have to make them IFRS compliant. And then if they are operating in a different currency, we'd have to translate those financial statements and then we consolidate. Whereas in our course, we did consolidations first and then we're doing uh, the foreign currency translations. Uh, this is very intentional for a number of different reasons. Uh, the first being, uh, quite honestly, I do not want to end off this course with consolidations. Uh, consolidations is something that we built up to uh, throughout you know, much two thirds of this course. And then we examine it and we learn from it. And those learnings will, you know, keep coming back uh, in, in many different ways, but none of which in this course directly, directly with that quant. Um, but now rather we get to zoom out again and say, okay, what are the other things that can lead up to the consolidation? What are other areas in which uh, it could come to be uh, versus, you know, and this way we can split up into kind of uh, smaller testable topics, and I hesitate saying the word smaller when talking about TT number two, but I think you'll see what I mean um, based on last week's foreign currency transactions, as well as the hedging, as many of you pointed out, uh, looking at it qualitatively. How do we, uh, when would this come up? Why would this matter? How could we deal with it? What would this look like? And now we're looking at our translation of foreign operations. So here we have the parent, uh, you know, it is in the presentation currency in Canadian dollars. And we have this subsidiary or we have um, an item in which we have power over that we're going to consolidate for simplicity purposes. I'll continue to refer to them as subsidiaries. Although you know that from the previous chapter, that term subsidiary uh, may be somewhat limiting, but we'll just, because it doesn't include the SPEs, but we'll just continue calling them subs. Okay. So here, a parent has a sub and we need to consolidate them. Only the sub is has presentation currency and an operating currency in a different currency other than Canadian dollars, other than the parents uh, currency. So what do we have to do? Prior, well, prior to consolidation, we need to translate them. And now uh, that's what we are gonna be looking at for this chapter, kind of the pre-consolidation item, or what we do um, prior to combining financial statements. In this first topic, we'll talk about the why behind all of this. We're gonna be looking and exploring the accounting versus economic exposure of foreign currency. So broadly speaking, risk exposure is a term used to discuss the degree of chance that there that a risk event materializes for an entity. So briefly speaking, it's the strength of the possibility that something goes wrong, something bad happens. Foreign currency risk is one of the most commonly faced by businesses conducting their business in or with a foreign economy. Foreign currency risk is typically broken down into accounting that is a translation exposure and transaction exposure and economic exposure. Accounting exposure refers to the risk of loss being incurred due to the translation of financial statements from one currency to another. This includes financial statement items that are being translated at either the closing rate or the forward rate because transactions using the historical rate are unaffected as the rate in, from the day of the transaction is used in which there no gain or loss was possible. Don't worry about that. We will get into all of the mechanics in a subsequent video. Uh, but for now, I just want to mention that translation adjustments are either positive or negative. If positive, they increase the equity accounts of the entity in the form of a gain. And if negative, 
they decrease the equity accounts of the entity in the form of a loss. Transaction exposure refers to the foreign currency or FX exposure that exists because the transaction was entered into and paid for or consideration was received on a later date. Essentially, it is the timing difference. For example, a Canadian company may sell some equipment to a U.S. company in a transaction denominated in U.S. dollars to be paid 90 days from the date of the transaction. If the U.S. dollar depreciates in that de period, depreciates, hmm, devalues, I don't know, decreases, uh, in that period, the company would suffer a transla translation loss from the transaction upon collection, as the US dollars they collect are not as strong as they expected them to be at the time of the transaction. So, difference in valuation from the time that the transaction was entered into and settled, as discussed in a previous video where we talked about foreign currency transactions. So, this is same, same. We're just building um, up into what happens when we actually own all of the thing that's <laughs> transacting with this transaction exposure versus in the prior chapter where we discussed what happens when it's like a single transaction or a series of single transactions. So same issue with this transaction exposure discussion. Okay. Economic exposure. This refers to the risk of loss because the economic value of transactions is affected by exchange rates. For example, a U.S. company might invest in a Canadian company with an expectation that the Canadian company will maintain high enterprise value as an exporter. However, the Canadian dollar could strengthen, making the exports of the Canadian company relatively more expensive and thus decreasing their sales. Economic exposure, it's, it's really difficult to measure, but this is included in financial statements, typically through the revaluation of assets to their fair value, which inherently considers economic exposure to exchange loss. Okay, time for a question. A Canadian company has just purchased materials from a British vendor. They have agreed to pay in British pounds 45 days from the date of transaction. During the interim, the British pound appreciates relative to the Canadian dollar. This transaction has become A, relatively more expensive for the Canadian company due to transaction exposure. B, relatively less expensive for the Canadian company due to economic exposure. C, relatively less expensive for the Canadian company due to transaction exposure. Or D, relatively more expensive for the Canadian company due to economic exposure. What do you think? The correct answer is A. Since this exposure is related to differences in timing between the agreement and the transaction payment, it is transaction exposure. If the British pound has appreciated, it means the Canadian company will need to use more Canadian dollars to pay the debt denominated in pounds. This means it has become more expensive. Uh, some examples that I like to think of for myself when thinking about these FX increases or decreases is what happens when I say want to buy, you know, for example, uh, some shoes from Tory Burch and I don't want to shop at their outlet store online. So I am forced to use their U.S. site in which um, the, in which the prices are all in U.S. dollars. Uh, yet uh, when they hit my credit card, they are in Canadian dollars. So, yeah, the prices on their website stay the same. But if the U.S. dollar appreciates relative to the Canadian dollars, I have a higher number that hits my <laughs> that hits my uh, credit card statement, and that is not including shipping or any uh, duties uh, crossing the border. Anyways, <laughs> all right, that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.